One ice frappuccino for me, please, and with a double shot. Now, I suspect this is something you'd never hear if you traveled 100,000 years ago to check out on your super great-great-great-grandparents. First off, you wouldn't hear anything resembling human speech for a simple reason. The early humans developed a capacity for language about 50,000 years ago. So, to talk to your ancestors, you'd need to use some of the oldest forms of human communication, including talking or making sounds, drawing or painting, dancing, acting, and using symbols. For example, if you made some weird noises like grunts or guttural sounds, it would mean you're trying to communicate with your peeps or warn them about something. Another reason why no one would grab ice frappuccino back then is that 100,000 years ago, Earth was going through a serious ice age. Who wants an icy, refreshing drink in the middle of winter? It wasn't quite a full-blown glacial period, but it was definitely way colder than it is now. The sea levels were low and there were glaciers everywhere, which made it super tough for our early human ancestors to get around. Some even kicked the bucket while trying to migrate to other areas, especially up in Northern America and Europe. Back in the day when humans were still figuring out this whole survival thing, they chowed down on some pretty, you know, fancy stuff. We're talking tartar steak, sashimi, you name it. Okay, I'm exaggerating a bit. It wasn't an iconic fresh dish, but raw meat. Not a Japanese cuisine stable, but a plain fish. There weren't Michelin restaurants serving fancy dishes and Gordon Ramsay recipes, but prehistoric foodies happily munched on nuts, seeds, and berries. And you know what? Their lifestyle is gaining popularity today. And there's even a so-called paleo diet. Paleo stands for the Paleolithic period. The idea is all about eating like our early human ancestors did. Some scientists believe that our genes haven't quite caught up to the modern diet that came from farming. Thanks to farming, we've got grains, legumes, and dairy galore. But it turns out that these changes in our diet happen faster than our bodies could keep up with it. A hundred thousand years ago, humans roaming around were basically just like us in terms of looks and DNA, but their houses were far from being modern. Actually, those were just caves. They couldn't even buy a mere bed in Ikea. <laughs> Scientists in South Africa just discovered what they're calling the world's oldest bed. And no, it's not a fancy mattress with adjustable firmness settings. It's actually made of grass. Archaeologists stumbled upon mats of grass and sedge that were stacked half an inch thick on the floor of a rock shelter. And get this, the bedding is 77,000 years old. That's like 40,000 years older than the previous record holder. The mats were covered with leaves from a tree called the river wild quince, which repels pesky insects. These prehistoric folks were basically having a bed and breakfast situation going on in their cave. But let's be real. Living in a cave is pretty gross. Insects, rot, and lice are just a few of the issues. But instead of bouncing to a new spot when things got nasty, these people burned their bedding and made new ones. Yeah, seems like a hundred thousand years ago, life on Earth was totally wild. Sure, microbes and amphibians were chilling for billions of years before that, but things were way different back then. So during a prehistoric trip, you could have bumped into one of the biggest mammoths ever. Yup, the Colombian mammoth was a beast. Standing at 13 feet tall and weighing over 10 tons, it had curved tusks that were even longer than its body, somewhere over 16 feet. These weren't like those woolly mammoths you see in movies with their thick brown fur. The Colombian mammoths didn't need that kind of coat, because they didn't live in the icy regions of Europe and North America. But don't let their lack of fur trick you. These creatures were massive and could have been a real threat to humans who lived near them even though they were plant eaters. 
Another beast you'd stay away from is Toxodon. This land animal had some seriously cool curved teeth that gave it its name. It looked like a rhino, but with some similarities to rodents, too. The last one was spotted only 5,000 years ago, and that's pretty recent in the grand scheme of things. Charles Darwin even used the Toxodon as an example to explain evolution and anatomical differences. Some people think it might have been semi-aquatic, but its grass-eating habits suggest otherwise. Not only was the Earth full of cool animals, but it also had a diverse human population. There were all sorts of new species popping up left and right, and they were on the move, looking for a better place to call home than Africa's dry and dusty areas. One of those species was Homo floresiensis, aka the hobbits. These little guys were only about 3 feet tall and hunted for their food using stone tools. They were totally unknown until recently, when scientists found their remains in caves all over the world. Homo erectus were the first humans who actually looked like us. They were total trendsetters, standing upright and all. They were the first to explore outside of Africa and check out other continents. These guys were pretty smart, too, making cool tools and even cooking their own food. But unfortunately, they got a little too comfortable and lazy. They didn't keep up with the changing climate and eventually went extinct. It's a shame, really, because while other humans were hustling to improve their tools and survive, Homo erectus just couldn't keep up with the times. Lesson learned, don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. Homo sapien Neanderthals were basically our ancient cousins who lived in Europe and Asia. They were pretty smart and used fancy stone tools to hunt and survive. But let's not get too carried away with their intelligence, okay? The media likes to hype them up as geniuses, but there's not a ton of evidence to back that up. Modern people are the only non-extinct human species. You and I are part of the Homo sapiens sapiens subgroup that roamed the Earth 100,000 years ago, too. We were so smart that we even migrated out of Africa to Europe and Asia. Our intelligence was apparent from the very beginning. By the way, the era we're traveling in was called the Stone Age, as back then, people learned how to tame stones. That was a tremendously large era that started over 2 million years ago, and it only finished in 3300 BCE. Let's dive into Plombos Cave. It's a super cool spot located in the Plombos Private Nature Reserve on the southern Cape Coast of South Africa. The cave may be small, only around 430 square feet, but it's got a big history. Early modern humans were all about Plombos Cave, visiting repeatedly between 100,000 to 70,000 years ago before a sand dune partially sealed the entrance. Above the sand dune, you'll find material from the later Stone Age. The coolest discovery? Two pieces of ochre with geometric engravings that were found in 2002, marking one of the earliest signs of symbolic communication among early modern humans. It's about 75,000 years old. And it doesn't stop there. More engraved ochre pieces have been found in later excavations, proving that this type of communication has been around for ages. Plus, they found red lines of ochre drawn on a rock that dates back to 73,000 years ago, showing that painting was also happening back then. Also, in 2008, they discovered a 100,000-year-old ochre processing workshop with a couple of toolkits at Plumbos Cave. These toolkits consisted of two abalone shells containing an ochre mixture that was possibly used for painting or other purposes. Our technology has sure made a quantum jump since the first tool ever was invented. But just so you know, it all started with pointed stones in Plumbos Cave. Yeah, probably the reason why you have the internet today is because some prehistoric dude in Plombo's cave learned how to use pressure flaking and managed to sharpen the very first stone ever. 
And there were some inventions in between that. But yeah, 